Okay, uh, here's another exercise now, a uh, single factor ANOVA, another randomized block design. So again, just a, a little recap. What we're doing here is basically accounting for the different sources of variation that exist within the data set. So with a randomized block, we are looking at that source of variation that can be attributed to our treatments, that which can be attributed to heterogeneity or differences uh, between our observational units, those things that we are observing, those things that we are getting the data from. Uh, plus, of course, random fluctuation, random variation in a data set. So basically what we're doing is we are just, I, I say accounting for, or we are removing one source of variation, uh, effectively taking it out of the calculation. So if you recall in the completely randomized experiments, when we had just SST was a function of the SSTR plus SSE. Well, we can take any exercise, let's say the one that we're looking at here, and if I were to treat this as if it was completely randomized, so I eliminate uh, the fact that we're using the, the same uh, observational units for the different treatments, uh, what this would do now is it would take SSBL, so that source of variation that is due to heterogeneity or differences across treatments, and it would all just get lumped into SSE. Some of Square's treatment is not going to be affected by how we treat the data. If we treat this as a completely randomized design or if we treat this as a randomized block design, SSTR is going to be the same. But now if we can set this up as a randomized block experiment, this variation, which would otherwise be just attributed to random variation in the data set, well, we split that up. We're effectively partitioning that variation into, well, there's still some that's random variation, but then there's some that we can attribute to variation due to blocks or due to differences between our observational units. Why does that matter? Well, when we perform the F-test, MSTR, over MSE, well, compare these two SSEs. Let me call this one SSE1 and this one SSE2. Well, if I block it and I remove that source of variation, that means that SSE1 is going to be much smaller. Well, I say much smaller, but it will be smaller than SSE2. So if SSE1 is smaller, if that sum of squares due to error is smaller because I've accounted for this other source of variation, well then MSE is going to be smaller, which means that F statistic is going to be larger. So with a larger F statistic, that now makes it more easy to identify any difference which can be attributed to differences between treatments. So that's why it's beneficial if we can set up an experiment as a randomized block design because it gives us a more refined, more robust estimate uh, of MSE by taking into account this other source of variation. Okay, so without further babbling on, let's, uh, let's get into these calculations and uh, clean this up. And we'll develop our full uh, randomized block ANOVA table. So here we have uh, dog food manufacturers developing a new brand of dog food designed specifically for less active dogs. They have developed two types of food with lower fat, higher protein blend of ingredients in order to minimize weight gain, a common problem among these lazy dogs. In order to determine if there's a difference between the two brands of food and the dog's regular diet, a group of five dogs were each fed the three types of food for a period of, th of 30 days. So they were given each of the two new brands and they were given uh, their original diet. The data below shows the difference in weight between the first and the 30th day on the diet. Positive number is weight gain, negative number is weight loss. So here let's call these our three treatments, A, B, and C. So K is equal to three. I have type one and type two dog foods, plus I have their original diet. And here we have our blocks, five blocks. These are our dogs. So I guess dogs are different by breed. They're different by size. Their metabolism is different. So we want to take into account those differences and, 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 and account for it in our calculations. 
So, uh, we are going to go through and complete our ANOVA here. We have um, SS due to treatments. We'll have blocks. We'll have error. And we'll have SS total. And here's sum of squares. Here's degrees of freedom. Here's mean square. F, P, and F not another P, F critical. Okay, so when we're going through any randomized block design, I always give my students either SST or SSE because otherwise to obtain SSE requires matrix algebra. To calculate SST is very time consuming. So here I've provided SST is 6373. So we can write that in down here and now we will fill in the rest with our calculations. So our null hypotheses, we are testing, is there a difference between A, B, and C? Alternative, not all are equal. And let's just do alpha 05 again. So the start, SSTR. So our formula here, we're looking at differences between treatment means and the grand mean, which we still don't have. We add all of those up across our treatments and we multiply it by the number of observations in each of those treatments. Let's get our grand mean. We're gonna need that for many of the calculations. So our grand mean, I'll take the mean of the treatment means you can verify that taking the mean of the block means will give exactly the same answer, but there's always fewer treatments than there are blocks. So minus 0.6 plus 1.8 plus 0.4 divided by 3. So 0.53 is our grand mean. And if you take the mean of those block means, you would better get the same result, otherwise there's a problem somewhere. So let's uh, go ahead, so B is five. And now we'll go through all of these differences with these three treatment means. So minus six, minus 0.53 squared, 1.8 minus 0.53 squared, and 0 0.4 minus 0.53 squared. Okay, I'll get my calculator. You can always fast forward through these tedious calculations if you want. They're not the most entertaining part of the process to watch. Uh, okay, put it right over there. So, 0.6. Minus 0.53 squared. Can you hear my dog? She's making gross noises. She's over here. Hopefully you can't hear those noises. I don't want to restart this video just because of that. Uh, okay, at squared plus open brackets, 1.8 minus 0.53 squared plus open brackets, 0.4 minus 0.53 squared equals 163. And now we multiply that by five. So 8.17 for our sum of squares treatment, 817. Degrees of freedom, k minus one, so that's three minus one is two. Mean square, 8.17 divided by two is four point, let's just call it 4.1. And that's it for treatment for now. Let's uh, calculate our block. So it's a little bit longer because I've got five means to work with instead of just three. But that's okay, I think we can do it. Again, I don't blame you if you want to fast forward through this. The calculations are not the most entertaining thing to watch. SSBL. Now we're looking at those difference in block means and the grand mean squared. Add those up across all of the blocks and multiply it by K, the number of treatments, or simply the number of observations in that relevant block mean. So k is three. Now we'll go across these five block means and the difference with the grand mean. So 
minus 0.53 squared. Next one's the same, 1.33. Next one is 0.33. Next one's 1.67. Next one is negative 2. Did all that fit? Oh, just barely. Okay. Let's get the calculator. Okay. Fast forward. Okay, 1.33 minus 0.53 plus 1.33 minus 0.53 plus 0.33 plus 1.67 plus the last one, negative 2 minus 0.53 squared equals 9 times 3 equals 27.1 okay Come back down here, 27.1 degrees of freedom, B minus 1. We had five blocks, so we have four degrees of freedom. 27.1 divided by 4 equals 6.76. Okay, and now we can move on to error. So we have, this one is going to be the easiest of the calculations. SSE, oops, SSE, this is SST minus SSTR minus SSBL. So once we've got those first few done, this one becomes easier. 6373 minus 27.1 minus 817, 2846. In error, the degrees of freedom are a little bit different. K minus 1 times B minus 1. So this is simply 2 times 4, so 8. And then 2846 divided by 8 equals 356. Okay, and last but not least, our degrees of freedom here. NT minus 1. Uh, NT was 15 observations. Minus 1 is 14, which is also 8 plus 4 plus 2. So everything works out. Now our F statistic is going to be uh, MSTR divided by MSE. So this is 4.1 divided by 356. Oops. Okay, 4.1 divided by 3.56, 1.15, good. Let's do critical value, so this alpha is 0 0.05. We have two degrees of freedom, right? MSTR was two, and MSE was eight, so two and eight degrees of freedom. F distribution, two degrees of freedom there, eight degrees of freedom there. So we're coming down to this block of numbers. Alpha is 0.05, so coming back across, that gives us a critical value of 4.459. 4.459. So, here we have our F distribution, critical value 4459. We reject for a test statistic larger than that. Here our test statistic is 115. So that looks like it falls into our do not reject space. Let's get a p-value and hopefully we'll get a, a consistent result. So our test statistic of 1.15, let's see, clean this up. So 1.15, well it's smaller than our smallest here. Right? It's smaller than 311. So our p-value must be larger than 0.1. So 
So that checks out, that's consistent with our critical value result. So we do not reject, we have insufficient evidence to show that there is any difference at all between these two dog foods and their original diet. Do not reject. Okay, good. That's, uh, that's all there is to it, to the test. Now, I just want to touch on one little thing quickly. How's my time? 15 minutes. One little thing quickly here. Related to what I was saying at the beginning of this video, where we had SST in this randomized block design is SSTR plus SSBL plus SSE. And if we were to have treated this as a completely randomized design, it would just be SSTR plus SSE. And remember that I said that by, by blocking it, by, by designing it as a randomized block experiment instead of just this, we are effectively partitioning this SSE into its two components, that which is due to blocking and that which is due to random variation. So if we come down here to our NOVA, had we treated this as a purely ex a randomized design, we wouldn't have had this whole row on blocks. This row would not have been here. And the result would have been uh, an SSTR that is still equal to uh, 8.17 and an MSTR that is still equal to 4.1. That part, uh, that would not have changed one bit. But this sum of squares would have been lumped into our uh, sum of squares error. So what we would have had for SSE, if we were to not have taken into account that source of variation, this would have been 27.1 plus 28.46. So SSE would have been 27.1 plus 28.46 would have been 55.56, which means that MSE, am I running out of room? No, MSE would have been equal to 55.56 divided by the degrees of freedom, which then would be n minus k, so 15 minus 3, so that would be 12, which as you can see is 8 plus 4, and this would have given us, where's my calculator, 55.56 divided by 12, 4.63. Oops. So this would have been 4.63. So it doesn't look like a significant difference between 356 and 463. But if we come back to our F statistic, let me just put in our new uh, SSE, so 4.63. That new F statistic now, as you can see, is going to be somewhat smaller. 4.1 divided by 463, that would now give us an F statistic of 0.89. So, point of the story, I'm a little bit off topic here, but point of the story here is that by taking into account that, that additional variation due to blocking, we removed it from our estimate of uh, sigma squared. We removed it from our estimate here of MSE. So that gives us that gave us a larger F statistic. Now in this case we didn't reject and we don't reject in either scenario. But if we had not blocked it, here we can see we would have ended up with a smaller F statistic. It would have been even further down here 0.89 giving us still uh, still stronger evidence uh, in favor of the null hypotheses. So you can see how in different circumstances, blocking versus not blocking, in this case it was a difference between a test statistic of 115.89, it didn't change our conclusion, but it could be the difference between 
two values up here, one where I end up rejecting and one where I don't reject. So it could in fact result in a, a, a significant difference in terms of changing our conclusion. Okay, so enough said about this. We've got everything done. Uh, hopefully that all made sense and my little tangent didn't cause any extra confusion. Um, but that's it. We have uh, no evidence to reject the null hypotheses. Our dog foods are all the same. Okay, thanks for watching. Bye-bye.